a Vancouver area nightclub owner vanishes into thin air. I felt something was very, very wrong. Police think he's fled town for a new life under a new identity. He's probably someone who has gone missing and does not want to be found. But a psychic sees things differently. I felt that there was foul play. And his fiance refuses to believe he'd ever leave her. <laughs> it's like he was like the closest person to me. No way. Can a psychic help a desperate woman solve the mystery of what happened to Bill Rudy? I certainly didn't feel like he slipped in the bathtub. On Canada's Wild West Coast, Vancouver, British Columbia is one of the most exciting cities in the world, especially when the sun goes down. In the early 1990s, one of the area's hottest nightclubs was Rumors. Its owner was 51-year-old Bill Rudy. The multimillionaire has investments in nightclubs and real estate, and the cash is rolling in. And Bill Rudy lavished a lot of that money on his fiancée, Janet Bignall. He used to, like, totally spoil me, and we'd go out, and everywhere we went, it was always, like, fun. The couple were making plans together. Bill Rudy told Janet that he was ready to cash in his chips and start a new life with her in a small town east of Vancouver, near Janet's parents. What we were going to do is actually liquidate everything and then move to Kelowna. Basically, because Bill and I were going to move, I no longer had my own house because we were going to, like, be buying a new house. It seemed like everything was falling into place for Bill and Janet. But then he does something odd. In February of 1994, Bill checks into a local motel, telling Janet he needs to sort out his tangled business affairs before he makes the final move. He wanted just to take a week and sort all the tax things out and just have peace and quiet where nobody knew where he was. On Monday evening, February 21st, Bill and Janet spoke on the phone. He just said that he was just going to get something to eat and then he was going to go to bed. So he did call me that evening and it was around 9 o'clock. But the next day, she doesn't hear from him. I paged him like throughout the day and nothing. Then that evening, we were supposed to go out for dinner. I had a babysitter booked for like six o'clock and still like nothing. Two days pass and Janet still doesn't hear from Bill Rudy. It's like the knot in your stomach. I, I felt something was very, very wrong. Desperately worried, she goes to the police, but they don't see the disappearance of Bill Rudy as a top priority. One of them even said, well, obviously if it was a child, you know, we would take it more seriously, but people, are, when they're adults, I mean, people can just go away. But the police are obligated to do at least a routine investigation. They dig around a little and discover that Bill Rudy has one good reason to disappear. Bill Rudy had an ex-wife who he was still having some problems with and issues. And as they dig deeper, they begin to believe that Bill Rudy may be missing on purpose. Rudy was planning to get out of the business, had uh, taken care of his debts, and he was ready to move on. But Janet refuses to believe that Bill would ever leave her. People don't know him, like, on a personal level. Sure, they may know him on a business level, but no way. A fiancé is not quite the same as a wife, and um, there are many times where a girlfriend, fiancé, thinks that the relationship is, is maybe further along than than it actually is. But Janet had gone to Rudy's hotel room four days after he went missing. What she found convinced her this was not the room of a man who wanted to disappear. I go into the room and everything is there. The closet's full of clothes, his toothbrush is in the glass, his razor is like plugged in. Distraught and now dissatisfied with the police investigation, Janet decides to call a psychic. The motivation was to try to find out what happened to him. I totally believe in psychics, and obviously it wasn't going to hurt. Janet's friends suggest she contact Lori McQuarrie, a well-known psychic who lives in Portland, Oregon. I liked her, and I thought that this was a kind woman who was really in distress, and yet, even under all the stress, she was very, very driven. She was very focused on finding this answer, and I wanted to help her. 
The psychic asks Janet to send her information on Bill Rudy right away. I want a picture, a birth date, and a name, a map of the area where they were last seen. Laura uses a psychic technique she calls victimology. I can sit down and just looking at that picture, it's just focusing and allowing it to flow. And I get a story. I get a total story. And I just start writing. And the story Laurie is getting about Bill Rudy is deeply disturbing. If I weren't a psychic, I would be going, well, gee, this looks like a businessman. And what came through was, we have two people here. We have a man who presents himself as being the honest businessman, and then we have the hidden side. How do you tell this poor girl that her missing fiance is a really na nasty man and I don't like him? But I said it. I didn't want to believe her. Half of me is still skeptical. Well, okay, it's a psychic. It's not science. When I said this is a bad man, I believe I recall her saying, I know. He's not perfect. To Janet, Bill is the man she loves and plans to marry. But the psychic is onto something. The police have discovered that in his business life, Bill Rudy did have a hidden side. Bill Rudy used a number of aliases in the past, mostly to cover on somewhat shady business deals and, and houses and mortgages and things, but it showed that he was not above manipulating and fudging the rules. And Janet did know Bill Rudy had secrets. When they first met, he lied about his real name. He told me his name was John Andrews. The reason he was using these names is so that his ex-wife couldn't track him, and I totally believed him. A person who used aliases is not the most honest person in the world. Usually using those aliases to his advantage, to someone else's or the government's disadvantage. But Janet is desperate to find out what happened to the love of her life. Now it seems the psychic is the only one who can help her. She gave me positive encouragement. She was always available. Um, I talked to her, like, many times throughout. Not only has the psychic sensed that all is not what it seems with Bill Rudy, now she gives his fiance some truly chilling news. I knew he was gone. It's kind of like they say in the, the search and rescue world, it is no longer a rescue, it's a recovery. You know, to me, he still could have been missing, but Lori said, no, he's, he's gone. If the psychic is right, how did Bill Rudy die, and where is his body? Near Vancouver, British Columbia, nightclub owner Bill Rudy has vanished without a trace. The police think he's hiding and doesn't want to be found, but psychic Laurie Macquarie senses he's dead. I knew he was gone. Janet Bignell asks the psychic to come to Vancouver and help to solve the mystery of her missing fiancé. It was like two forces coming together. She was anxious for me to come up, and I was hoping to put a piece to the puzzle. Desperate to find Bill Rudy. For Janet, no price is too high. But Laurie surprises her. And I wouldn't have cared how much it cost, and she said, no, she said, dumb. I don't take money for missing people. And I said, well, why not? And she goes, because then I would lose my gift. But Lori does have a strange request. She asked me to make a reservation at the hotel and in the same room from where Bill went missing. Part of victimology for me is once I've gotten the initial facts, then if it's possible, I want to follow a physical route. I want to see physical surroundings that this person lived in or were around. As soon as Lori arrives in Vancouver, she heads straight to the hotel. She checks into room 206, the room in which Bill Rudy stayed. As I sat in the room, I could feel myself looking at maps on a bed, looking at papers, contracts, all the things that assembled his world. In the room, alone, Laurie tunes in again to Bill Rudy's fate. Not only is he dead, but she believes he's been murdered. I felt that there was foul play. I, I certainly didn't feel like he slipped in the bathtub. That was very painful for me to hear as well. She wasn't all that shocked when I told her that I thought he had been murdered. I think, again, this would had been simmering someplace in the back of her mind. But the Royal Canadian Mounted Police aren't interested in working with psychics. In their eyes, Bill Rudy had deliberately disappeared. You really can't take it to the homicide squad 
unless you have fairly good evidence that it's a homicide. In this case, we did not have a crime scene or a body. Nevertheless, if the psychic is right, what did happen to Bill Rudy? Janet has her suspicions, and they all center around Rudy's business partner and rumors manager, David Lowe. Bill didn't trust him anymore. In a ploy to hide money from his ex-wife, Bill Rudy had put the rumors nightclub in David Lowe's name. In return, Lowe had been paying Rudy $5,000 cash a week for over two years. But just before he disappeared, the payments started coming up short. It was the first time that Dave Lowe had not come up with all the money. He's like stalling him and giving him a lot of excuses. Janet Bignell's word is not enough for the police. They need concrete evidence. For that, she hires Ozzy Caban, a private investigator to watch and follow David Lowe. Based on undercover operations, based on uh, street talk and everything else, that was the guy of interest to us. But even Ozzy can't uncover any new evidence, and Bill Rudy's secret life doesn't help. We had an individual with about six different aliases, businesses all over the countryside. We realize that we're dealing with a situation here that, shall we say, is a little shady, a little on the dark side. None of that, however, matters to Janet. All I wanted to do is find out what happened to him. To do that, she asks the psychic and the private eye to join forces. Maybe they can solve the puzzle of what happened to her fiancé. And Lori thinks the best place to start is at the nightclub. She wanted to like, see if she could like feel Bill's energy. And I was scared to go. Ozzy thinks it's too dangerous for Lori to go alone, so he sends an undercover off-duty police officer to protect her. Lori and the cop shoot pool, but her mind is not on the ball. Her psychic senses are telling her details of Bill Rudy's death. I immediately knew that I was on the right track. Bill Rudy had died here. I knew it. I knew it beyond a shadow of a doubt. She says she can see how Bill Rudy died. And she says it was a brutal murder. I felt that there had been a blow to the back of the head. I didn't feel like he had a one-on-one -on -one confrontation knowing it was coming. I think it was up behind him and total surprise. If Bill Rudy has been murdered, like the psychic says, was it his business partner? And where on earth is Bill Rudy's body? The psychic believes his body has been dumped in the woods. What I felt was really surrounding him as, you know, laying there in whatever state he was in was definitely rural. So Lori and Janet hit the road in search of Bill Rudy. She wasn't familiar with the area at all, and yet she's the one telling me, like, which way to go. Yes, I felt a sense, the sense, go left, go east, and that's what we did, and it felt right. We kept driving, and she said, don't worry, he's going to be found. And looking at the map, and she says, I believe like he's in the back of Harrison area. Psychic Laurie McQuarrie has never been to British Columbia before. Yet she marks an area on her map, sensing that Bill Rudy's body lies in the mountains to the east of Vancouver. Whatever I pointed to, I felt strongly about it. And the problem always is, you know, usually people aren't dumped on a sidewalk. They're dumped in acreage. In fact, the area Lori circles is the perfect place to hide a body. It's vast, rugged, and remote. They drive all day, but the psychic can't seem to zero in on the exact location of his remains. I didn't think we were going to find him that day, but I would have been pretty excited if we had found his glasses or his jacket. Though they come away from the wilderness empty-handed, the psychic is convinced her vision of Bill Rudy's fate is right. But two weeks later, there's another twist in the tale of Bill Rudy. His van is found, abandoned at Vancouver Airport. For the police, it's further evidence that he wanted to disappear. And they said, well, we've located his vehicle. We found it at the airport. So obviously, he's left the country. You find a vehicle there, and that's a pretty good indicator that he's gone to the airport to leave. But when Janet picks up the van, what she discovers tells her it wasn't Bill Rudy who drove it to the airport. The music was like totally loud. Okay, well, that's not Bill. And totally on a radio station that Bill, like it was like heavy rock or something and just really, really loud. 
right? And it's like I like had an eerie feeling like driving that van too, right back to Surrey. So has Bill Rudy been murdered? Or has he vanished of his own accord to start a new life under a new alias, as the police suspect? At great cost, Janet remains convinced her fiancé would never leave her, and she continues to search for him. I just stopped working until I could find out what happened to Bill, so I lost my career. Ultimately, I was evicted from Bill's house <laughs> with, like, three days' notice, and uh, I spent all my money. And I remember uh, my, my dad said to me, you can spend the rest of your life going through the bush looking for him, and you may never find him. And so I, I was coming to that point, and I never thought he would be found. Months and then years pass, and the case cools and finally goes stone cold. Then, on September 27, 1996, two and a half years later, a logger makes a grisly discovery. And I looked over, and I couldn't believe it. I found a skull. Suddenly, the Bill Rudy case is red hot. Two and a half years after Janet Bignall's fiance, nightclub owner Bill Rudy disappeared, there's a new twist to the story. In September 1996, a logger working in thick forest in the Harrison Mills area east of Vancouver stumbles on the unexpected, a human skull. Psychic Lori McQuarrie says Bill Rudy's been murdered and his body has been dumped in Harrison Mills. I felt that there had been a blow to the back of the head. Will she be proved right? The logger immediately contacts the RCMP. They find a suspicious crack on the back of the skull, but nothing to identify whose skull it is. The skull is shipped to a crime lab for DNA analysis. Because of a huge backlog, it would take almost two years for the tests to identify the remains. But when the result came in, incredibly, they confirmed the skull belongs to Bill Rudy. Psychic Laurie McQuarrie was right. Bill Rudy had been buried in the exact area she marked on a map four years earlier. Whatever I pointed to and, and drew a circle on, I felt strongly about it. What police thought all along was a missing person case is in fact now a murder. Forensics showed Bill Rudy was killed by a blow to the back of the head, again, just as the psychic had predicted. I could just feel it, like almost Bill was staying there not expecting it. After four years, the Bill Rudy case is now officially a murder investigation. In the case of missing persons, uh, that file would be handed over to an active homicide unit and they would then take over the investigation, review the file, and start over again. And the first person the RCMP call is Janet Bignall. He said that human remains had been found through DNA, have been positively identified to be uh, William Rudy. And that's exactly the way he told me. It's really cold. But she's not prepared for what happens next. He brought another um, police officer in there, and then they, they started like recording it. And then ultimately, like as time went by, I found out that part of that was because now I was actually a suspect. I just, I couldn't even believe it. But the person the police are most interested in is Bill Rudy's business partner, David Lowe. Mr. Lowe uh, told investigators originally that everything was okay, that uh, Mr. Rudy had been paid up and now Mr. Lowe was inheriting the business. It didn't take investigators very long to realize uh, that Mr. Lowe had said things originally that were not true. But with no crime scene, no weapon and a very cold case, Proving that David Lowe killed Bill Rudy isn't going to be easy. What police do know is David Lowe's lifestyle had changed dramatically since Rudy disappeared. I was making tons of money, and he didn't invest it back into the club. He went on, you know, two or three cruises a year, Mercedes, race car. Lowe's high-rolling lifestyle had caught up with him. He had defaulted on the mortgage and lost the rumors nightclub. David Lowe was now working as a car salesman and herding for cash. So the police decide to exploit his weakness. The body was a car salesman, not very good at it, apparently. So not a whole lot of income. So when he realized he could re regain some status, some power, get some money, 
he was he was just prime for for the bait. He wouldn't have been thinking after so many years that now he was becoming a target of a sting operation. Three years after police confirm Bill Rudy was murdered, an undercover officer known as Jason meets and begins to form a relationship with David Lowe. Jason was tasked to befriend uh, Mr. Lowe and slowly gain his trust. Jason convinces Lowe that he's a gangster and tells him he can make big money if he can prove that he too is a bad guy. Finally, David Lowe tells Jason what he wants to hear, that he killed a man. With that admission, Jason tells David Lowe he can now meet his boss. You've told me a story about a murder, so you gotta tell it to the boss to impress him. So he knows that he's not gonna make the big money, he's not gonna get any status or power till he's in. And this is do or die for him, it's the job interview. At that meeting, Lowe admits to killing someone. I whacked the guy. I hit my partner with a hammer. They got the confession and they got it on videotape. After a six month sting operation, undercover cops arrest and charge David Lowe with the murder of Bill Rudy. Money was the motive. He missed payments and basically Bill was going to put the squeeze on him. And his back was against the wall and he didn't want to lose everything he had in life and then he was going to. During David Lowe's trial, testimony confirms all of psychic Laurie McQuarrie's visions of the crime 10 years earlier. The murder did take place in Rumor's nightclub, where Lowe crushed Rudy's skull with a hammer. Lowe did take Rudy's body to Harrison Mills and dumped him deep in the forest. I knew it would come full circle. I knew they'd find him. I knew this would end up being solved. She totally does have a natural gift, right? And I'll like be they like, forever grateful to her for sure on july 5th 2004 nine years after bill rudy had vanished david lowe is convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to 25 years in prison finally after nine years david lowe's conviction gives janet some peace and now at least i feel vindicated that uh the person is caught in jail and it would have been worse to go through the rest of my life without knowing. David Lowe is appealing his conviction. Janet Bignell has a new life, but she will never forget Bill Rudy. I miss him. Um, my life would have been a lot different, but I have learned a lot. I've learned uh, not always to take people at face value.